Hi, I'm Nick with Nick's Garage Door Service. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the gear and sprocket kit in your Chamberlain, LiftMaster, or Sears Craftsman garage door opener. Chamberlain also made operators for Wayne Dalton, Do It Best, and True Value at one point, as well as Rainer. So, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have a Chamberlain made unit. This is done easily by looking under the light cover for the garage door opener. As you can see on the information tag, it's got the Chamberlain logo up on top. We can also see the model number, 1245R, and the date, May of 1998. There are three reasons why you'd want to change your gear and sprocket kit in your garage door opener. In my case here, the motor runs and it doesn't move the door, which means the gears are stripped out. There's two other cases I'll talk about now. On this bin here, I've got two more examples. This one here not only has a stripped gear, that gear is shredded, but the top bearing is also completely destroyed. Signs of this would be a loose chain, a chain that hangs way down below the rail, or you could have a broken sprocket. So if you look down at the top of your machine, all you would see is that little stud at the top there. This can happen due to an unbalanced door, a heavy door, or a door with a broken spring. As can the other case there, as well as the stripped gear. So the first thing that you're going to want to inspect is your springs. Make sure that the spring is intact. If it was broken, there would be a gap in between the coils, somewhere in the coils on the spring, and you'd be able to see the shaft that runs through the spring. If that's the case, Call your garage door professional as changing springs is a dangerous job that I would not recommend to the average homeowner. Now in this case, the gears on this machine stripped out while the door is in the middle of travel. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and get the door closed because this probably happened while you were trying to go to work or get the kids to school. What you're going to want to do is pull the emergency release here and then lift the door up. Now you'll be able to get your car out. Before you go ahead and pull the machine apart, double check and make sure that the kit you ordered is the proper kit for your machine. You can do this by going on LiftMaster's website, www.liftmaster.com, or check the link in the description. I'll put one there to direct you to the manuals section. Find the owner's manual for your garage door opener. You'll need the model number from this off of that information tag I showed you earlier. Please keep in mind here that I'm just going to give you a basic overview of the procedure to replace this, and you may need to use your best judgment at times to get the job done. Let's start with the most difficult case to repair, the case of the broken sprocket. In this case, your chain will be dangling free, and your sprocket will be probably broken off somewhere on top of the machine. What you'll need to do is get your remote control or push the button on the wall and watch the sprocket or the shaft inside. When it spins clockwise, it's closed all the way. What you're going to want to do is spin it so that it spins counterclockwise until the machine shuts off and that'll be open. I'll show you why that's important later. While the chain is still disconnected, you'll also want to pull the chain up so that that inner slide, that silver piece, is close to the top here. Here's what you'll need to do the job. A pair of needle nose pliers. An Allen tool. I believe the size is 3 16 Use an SAE size Allen wrench. If you use the metric set, you will strip it out. Ask me how I know. You'll also need a metal file, a half inch wrench, a vice grip, a pair of slip joint pliers or another vice grip, a flathead screwdriver, and you'll also need some sort of a driver. Uh, I'm going to use my drill with two bits. You can use a ratchet. I wouldn't recommend nut drivers because the, mo the motor bolts are very tight and you probably won't have much luck getting them loose with a nut driver. It's also handy to have your remote control. Another good option is a set of gloves. Latex gloves will work, however the best choice is a set of work gloves. I don't happen to have a set with me though, so I'll be using latex. Now if you don't have a broken sprocket and your top bearing is just worn out, your door opener should still move, but it may not stop properly. Just hit the button and let it come up all the way. If it doesn't come up, you may need to help it like I'm going to show. Now for a machine that has stripped gears like this, you're going to need to help the machine along to get it to the fully open position. So if you disconnected the door like I have here, you'll want to reconnect it. 
Make sure the emergency release cord is pulled forward and lift the door until it re-engages with the inner slide. Now, with the button on your remote control or a wall station, press the button and start the motor. Now you notice that loud grinding noise that it made when I first started to lift? That's because the machine was running the opposite direction and it was trying to close the door. To solve that problem, simply put your foot through the safety beams or push the button on your remote control again to reverse the direction of the motor. So if it's a cold day, you can now disconnect the garage door opener and lower it. I'm going to do that just so people that walk by don't think I'm crazy. Safety first. Always unplug the machine. If you have a light lens, it's also a good idea to take the light lens off and take the light bulb out and put them both in a safe location. Now we're going to start pulling the operator apart. You'll need your quarter inch drive socket as well as your driver tool. On some machines there's only one screw in the center on the front and rear end panels, but on this machine there are two. So you'll need to pull both of those out. Now I want to show you something. You can see in there, maybe, kinda, it goes into plastic. So these are coarse thread screws, meaning the threads on the screws are farther apart. There you go. So, when you pull out the side screws, they're very close together, the threads. So those are fine thread screws. The ones with the far apart teeth, those are coarse thread screws. Any of the fine thread screws go around the top of the case. Any of the coarse thread screws go across to the bottom of the case because they go into plastic. Some of these get pretty snug and stuck on there, so don't be afraid to have to wiggle and push a little. So now you can see all of the plastic shavings in the case from the gear that's stripped out. Okay, so I removed the circuit board and placed it on top of the machine. It's two screws at the top and then you remove this connector. Be careful not to damage the pins. So, also it's worth noting that the screws that hold the circuit board onto the chassis of the machine have washers on them. These have small washers on them. So don't confuse these with your normal case bolts because if you put them on and you don't have the washers in, there's a good chance you can crack the plastic housing. And here's another look at the completely stripped out gear. So, first things first, we're going to want to remove the limit assembly. There's two small clips that hold it to the case. Just pinch that, and the whole thing swings down. Then it carefully pulls down. So, the brown wire is your down limit, and the yellow wire is your open limit. The slider here moves back and forth, and it's turned by that small gear at the bottom of the sprocket assembly. So, you want to make sure it's not on the down position limit. If it is, and your chain is in the up position, you can turn this small gear here until the slider touches the yellow wire contact, which you can see right there. Maybe. I need a different camera. Okay, so you're also going to want to pull off the limit gear. There's a small clip you need to separate. Usually it takes two hands, but if I break this I'm not concerned because the new kit comes with one. There we go, small W clip, and the limit gear pulls straight down. There we have it. Those two can go in the garbage. You're also going to want to disconnect the connector there for your RPM sensor. Again, be careful not to damage it. You can also pull the, uh, the wheel off of the shaft of the motor. Put that in a safe place because the kit does not come with a new wheel. So what I've done here is I've gently locked a vice grip onto the chain on both sides of the rail. What this is going to do is it's going to hold the chain up on the rail for me while I take tension off of it here at the adjuster. Now what you're going to do is take your wrench, this is the half inch wrench, focus,
I'm sorry guys, this camera's really fighting me. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get, I guess. Loosen up one and loosen up the other. One locks the chain in place and the other one actually adjusts the chain tension. So when you loosen the one that locks the chain in place, you can make adjustments. And when you fully back that nut off, you'll be able to remove the chain from the sprocket at the back of the motor there. Let's see if I can get this better. I'm really sorry guys, this is fighting me today. Um, so we're going to remove the nut there. There's a lock washer on the shaft. Do not lose that. So then we can pull the chain off of the sprocket. Now I'm going to put everything back on here so I don't lose it. So once you're sure that you've got your sprocket disconnected from your chain, and once you've gotten the limit and the RPM sensor disconnected, you can go ahead and begin to remove the wiring for the motor. Now, I did forget something in the parts that you'll need, and that's a wire cutter, because you need to cut this zip tie. Be very careful not to cut a wire in the process of removing that zip tie. Once you've done that, go ahead and take your needle nose pliers, and up ahead on the main power block, there's a white wire that runs to the motor. Grab it with your pliers, wiggle it and disconnect it, pull it off. You may need to untwist this. There we go. Now, your motor start capacitor will need to be dealt with. While you're in here, it's a great time to inspect it. There's one quarter inch bolt that will remove the bracket that holds it on. Don't lose that like I just did. Pop off your bracket here. And what you're going to want to inspect is make sure that this isn't dripping oil. Then you can also either use your pliers or hands, and I'm going to need the pliers. Remove the blue and white wires that go to the motor, but there's two that run to the main wiring harness. Leave those attached so you know where to put them back on the machine. Okay, so now that you're sure that all the wiring is off, you can go ahead and remove the motor. There's two 5 16 bolts here and two on the other side. Okay, so go ahead and put your 5 16 bit on whatever driver you're using and remove the screws. There's two. Once you pull two out, you're going to want to support the motor at all times. Three. Here's the last one. Now, it may want, not want to come down, so put your thumb on the bottom of the shaft, pull your fingers here, and just pull. And the motor's free. I'm going to put this down on the ground. Okay, and there's three more 5 16 bolts that hold the sprocket to the chassis. You'll see what those are. One there, one there, and one there. Okay. That pulls out through the top, and the sprocket's out. So now that it's down on the ground, you can see what they give you in the new kit here. Got your new gear and sprocket assembly, comes with a new limit gear. Your new worm gear. A packet of grease. And all these smaller components come in a bag. Now, the only parts that I don't replace, oops, don't want to lose these. Only parts that I don't replace are the roll pins. It's time consuming, it's a pain in the butt, unless you've got a bent one, which I've never seen, don't bother wasting your time. But replace all your motor bearings. So now that this is down on the ground, we're going to go ahead and tear the motor assembly apart. Okay, first things first, turn the gear until you can see one of the set screws on the collar and loosen it up. You don't have to take it all the way off, just get it pretty loose. And then turn it till you see the other one. Loosen that as well. You can pull it off now. Sometimes these don't want to come off very easy. Now, you've got this little cap washer, a spring washer, and a regular thrust washer. Pay attention to the thickness. This is the thin washer. In the kit, sometimes you'll get a thin one, sometimes you'll get a thick one, sometimes you'll get both. You're going to want to put the one on there that was already in. Now don't go ahead and just yank everything off of here. 
I always recommend you take your file and just file down the burrs on the motor shaft. Here you can kind of see what I'm talking about. That little silver raised portion there on the motor shaft, that's a burr left by the screw. If I turn it a little bit, you can see another one. There's pieces of metal that are actually sticking up, and it's larger than the bearing. So you can go ahead and beat on it and take the old one off, but I always recommend filing it down first so you don't forget to do that later. Because if you go ahead and hammer your new bushing in, or your bearing in, it's going to make a two large uh, gouges in the new bearing, and that puts premature wear in there. So just take your file, file it down, make it nice and smooth so it all comes apart easy. This way it all goes back together easy and in good shape. Just a few seconds with each one is all you need. Now, if you can grab it, take your motor bearing and pull it off. This one still is a little bit tricky. It's probably just been in there for a long time and there's probably dirt and grit. So I'm going to go ahead, it won't come off all the way, I'm going to go ahead and remove the motor plate with your 3 8 wrench. There are three screws that hold the plate to the motor. three nuts, excuse me. Remove those. And the motor plate comes loose. Now with a little bit of pressure, the motor plate comes out along with the old bearing. All the dust and stuff, your case is probably full of it anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and try and get all that dust to stay inside the opener case. And the old gear comes off. Chuck this in the garbage so you don't confuse it with the new one. Now it's time to change the bottom sprocket bearing in the motor plate. There's two bearings that come in the kit. You'll need to use both of them. One of them has a small keyway on it, and it also has a dot on the top and a flat edge. That is the motor bearing that actually spins on the motor shaft. We'll need that in a minute, but not right now. The one you're looking for is the perfectly round bearing, no cuts, no keyways, no slashes on it, it's just a round bearing. Also the motor bearing has kind of a bronze color to it, this motor sprocket bearing, excuse me, the motor bearing is bronze, the sprocket bearing is more silver. So you're going to want to take that one, turn the motor plate upside down and be careful not to damage your RPM sensor assembly. It's difficult to remove so I don't recommend doing it, but take your hammer, Give it one good whack and it comes loose. You can see it's starting to stick out. Now you take your uh, slip joint pliers or your other vice grip, grab it and twist it and pull and it comes out. Here's where you need that deep socket or piece of pipe or something that'll fit over that little raised boss. Get this new bearing here centered as straight as you possibly can. Then you're going to want to go ahead and take it, put it on your socket, and drive it home. Couple easy taps. It's in most of the way. Could use probably one more. Once you hear the sound change, stop, and you're all set. Let's put it back together. So. We're going to get the new worm gear from our kit and go ahead and slide it on the shaft. Make sure that the two little recessed parts in the gear go over the roll pin. Okay, now we're ready to loosely install the motor plate. This goes over and just goes on those three studs. I'm going to very loosely just put the nuts on to hold the plate attached to the motor. And right about now is where we're going to need some grease from the kit. Give you this big packet. Open it up. Gonna 
spread a little bit of grease on the shaft right about where the bearing is going to sit. You can put a little bit on the inside of the bearing too. Okay, so now notice on the motor plate there is a groove in the bottom that the little keyway fits into. Make sure you're putting that on correctly. Just wiggle it into the plate. Spin the shaft to make sure that uh, the grease goes in there. Okay, so now that that bearing is installed, we can tighten down the nuts that hold the motor plate to the motor. Just going to do that again with the 3 8 ratcheting wrench. You don't got to kill them, just make them snug. And now we need to put the locking retainer onto there. So, the kit comes with all these parts. You can go ahead and reinstall the, the old collar, but I recommend putting the new one on, especially because these come with new fresh Loctite on there so they don't come loose. One there, and one there. Make sure you put them in the right way so the heads face outwards. There's nothing worse than uh, putting it in and then realizing you stuck it in backwards. Ask me how I know. So, again, here's what I was talking about. They give you two different thickness washers. We had the thinner washer in there before, so we're going to go ahead and put the thinner washer in again. The thick washer we can go ahead and save for something else. So. Here's the order of these go on the shaft. Put your thin washer on, then put your spring washer on. You can see this one, it's bent, so it uh, acts as a spring. And then the cap washer, which holds it all together. Now this is kind of the tricky part of the whole assembly. We need to push the motor shaft all the way that way while pulling the collar as far this way as possible on the shaft. So the easiest way that I've found to do this is to turn the motor up on its back side. You won't crush the wires because the motor shaft sticks out far enough. Once you've done that, go ahead and push the collar down, compress it as far as you can, and then get your Allen key wrench and go ahead and tighten down one of them. Once you've gotten one tight, you can go ahead and let go of it. And then we'll go ahead and tighten down the other one. These should be just a little bit more than snug, but if you've got one of these plastic tools like I do, um, just uh, go until you see the Allen wrench start to twist a little bit. You'll feel it too. It'll bend. That's how you know that you're as tight as it should go. So I'm also going to get up now and grab the uh, rotary wheel. There's a little bit of dust and stuff in here. going to wipe that out because if that gets uh, caught up in your sensor, that can cause you to have some problems. So just give it a quick little blowout. Pop it on the shaft there. Now when you look at that, look into the sensor and make sure the wheel sticks down in the sensor at least halfway. Okay, so now we're basically ready to go ahead and put the gear and sprocket assembly into the chassis of the machine. But before we do that, we need to thread the holes in here because they do not come threaded. Now you can see there's three holes up on top that are raised. Those are the holes that you're going to want to go ahead and put the screws in. Now, what you're going to do, you can do this with a ratchet. I've done it before. It's not that hard to thread these. Just take one of your screws and run it through. Do that on all three holes. Okay, so now we're ready to put the sprocket assembly inside the motor housing. When you do this, there's a square cutout here for a sprocket cover. You don't have to put it back on, but I recommend it if yours is still there. So you're going to want to take the hole that is in line with the square sprocket cover hole and put that towards the back. Drop that in. Okay. 
Now take those three 5 16 bolts, line up the first hole, and just put it in, leave it loose. Take the second one, get it started. And the third one, once you get the third one in, you can go ahead and drive that one home. And then follow with the other two. Now the other thing that you don't want to forget is your little limit gear here is attached. Go ahead and take that off now before you forget later. So, now we're also going to want to go ahead and grease the gears. They give you a whole packet of grease. Use it. So, we're going to take some of this and spread it all around the gear, just on the teeth. These are made to run with grease, so if you don't grease them, this gear won't last more than a month. So now that we've got grease all the way around that gear, I'm going to take a little bit of it and put it on where the lower sprocket bushing is going to sit. Just spread that around there. Grease up that bearing, give it a lot of life. So now that everything's greased up, I'm going to go ahead and grease the worm gear on the motor. Then I'll bring the motor over here and install it on the chassis. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and install this. I'm going to just pop the motor on the shaft, push it up flush with the uh, chassis, then get my drill with one of the screws, run that in. Grab another one and put it in on the other side. Then we'll put the other two in. I never let go of that motor until I've got two screws in. Then we go ahead and put the other one in and the other one on this side. Okay, now we can go ahead and reconnect the motor wires. Now, the red and the blue wires go to the capacitor, don't mix up the colors. You can see on the capacitor here that there's two wires that go together and two wires that are separate. Basically you want to put the blue to the blue and the red to the red. Don't cross them otherwise the motor is going to run the opposite way you want it to. So basically you go to open the door, it'll try and close. That's not what you want. Everything's back on there. Now we're going to take the <laughs> wire that just got covered in grease. Put that back on the gear. That's why you wear gloves. Take the white wire and attach that back onto the power terminal. Here's where your needle nose pliers come in handy. And now we're going to change this out. We don't need our 5 16 bit anymore. We're going to go ahead and put our quarter inch bit on. Now we're going to install the capacitor back onto the chassis with that little silver quarter inch screw and the bracket. So, the bracket sits around the capacitor. One end goes up into the chassis and the other end is where the screw goes. Don't kill this one. Just make it snug. So, after that, we plug in the RPM sensor, take your limit assembly, push it up into the square slot in the motor plate, rotate it, and put the two clips in the two square holes. Double check that they're both seated in there, which this one's not. There we go, now it is. And then take your limit gear, line up the slot in it with the hole, you can just basically push it straight up, then take your W clip and run it through the hole. Snaps in, and you're all good to go. Okay, now we're ready to install the chain on the garage door opener sprocket. It's never going to line up in the same place, and if you do, you're lucky. But take the chain, and run it onto the sprocket, find a tooth where it lines up, and you can see that there's still quite a bit of slack on this side. That's okay. As long as it slips into here, and you can get your uh, nut on there and tighten it up, you're good to go. 
So, I'll show you what I do next. Okay, I'm going to try to stay out of your way here when I do this, but as you can see, I've got the chain on the sprocket on the door opener. Now I'm going to uh, put the lock washer on. Um, you always want to put that on before you stick it into the trolley there. Then go ahead and snug the nut up as good as you can get it. Now release your vice grip. You can see the chain hung down. So I'm going to show you now how to adjust the chain and get it to the proper tension. So this is one of the less exciting processes of the whole operation. What we've got to do is snug the chain up until the chain is about a quarter inch above the rail on both sides. Now, this takes a little while. Um, I don't recommend using drills because over tightening this can actually cause your top sprocket bearing to wear out and then you're back where you started. So, take your time, use a wrench, get it to where it should be, and remember to check both sides because I've had it before where it's looked okay on one side and on the other side it's still hanging down too low. So, that's about a quarter inch off the rail in the center, but this side here is actually still pretty much touching it. So I'm going to go a little bit tighter. That's about where we want it. Now, it'll make certain noises sometimes um, if the chain is too tight or too loose. Basically, it's better to be too loose than too tight if you can't figure it out. Loosen up the chain just a little bit. It'll make a little bit of noise, maybe drag along the other side of the trolley, but that's better than having the chain too tight, because if it's too tight, you'll break that sprocket off like I showed you before. Now I'm ready to reinstall the logic board on the machine. In order to do this, you'll need your quarter inch driver. So go ahead, remove the screws from the plate if you put them back in here like I did. go ahead and get your board. Now the tricky part here is lining up all the little pins on the board with the connector. So take your time, make sure you do it right, and make sure you push it in all the way. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and just uh, get these started by hand. Now, I would recommend doing this by hand if you've never done it before, but I do this every day, so I'm going to be very gentle with my impact gun here and get it nice and snug. Okay, so now that that's connected, um, we're going to go ahead and put the case back on. I recommend doing that and then making your adjustments with your limits. So before you put it on, just double check, make sure your limit gear is on, make sure they're touching each other, make sure that you screwed everything down, make sure that you put the wires back on, double check and make sure that the uh, wire for the circuit board is seated properly, make sure your RPM sensor is on, make sure your RPM wheel is on, that's another big cause of it. And the one last thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of the grease from those gears and put them on the limit gear. Give that a little love too. I actually got a little bit left in that packet there, so I'm going to squeeze most of that out of there and use that on the limit gear and the limit shaft. Okay, and that's about the last of it. I'm going to take all the uh, dust and get that out of the case real quick. That's as good as it can get. Now, take note, your limit screw adjustments are on one side. Want to make sure you put the correct side of the case on. Now again with your quarter inch bit, get the coarse thread screws. Those are the ones with the teeth that are close together. And we're going to put those in first. Those go into the metal chassis on the top of the case. Okay. 
Okay, now we've got the fine thread screws. These are the ones with the threads farther apart. These go into the bottom of the case. Again, I would recommend doing those by hand because they are going into plastic. If you over tighten them, you can strip them out. But, as I said before, I do this every day and I've learned to be gentle with the gun. So. Okay, so, we're ready for the test run. Oh, I gotta, make sure you reconnect your wiring. Mine's on a plug, uh, but yours, if you took the board off, you'll have to uh, reconnect it to the, um, the logic board at the back of the machine there. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is plug it in. Put our light bulb back in here for confirmation that we've got power. There we go. So, if all goes well, I should be able to push this button and that traveler should slide forward and made up with the uh, outer carriage of the garage door opener. Okay, well, didn't quite made up, but uh, it's close, so we'll pull the emergency release. Uh, lift it up a little bit, and it sits right into place. So, let's push the button and see how far it goes up. Whoops. Hey, it might help if I unlock the garage door. Mistake number one, folks. can't plan stuff like that. Okay, now you can see that went up way too far. Yeah, you can see that. It's open way too far up there, and it's smacked into the emergency stop bolts on the rail. So we're going to need to take our flathead screwdriver and insert it in the travel on the side of the machine here. There's a screw that says, you know, let me just bring you up there. There's a screw that says, increase travel. Well, we want to decrease the travel. So, the up travel is what we want to adjust. To make it go up farther, you turn it clockwise. To make it go uh, up less, you turn it counterclockwise. A little flathead screw in there that we're going to turn back. I'm going to go probably two turns. And we'll close it and go back up, see where we're at. That's about right. So we'll go down. And I could tell it didn't close all the way, so I'm going to make this adjustment while it's going down. It was close though, so I'm going to go half a turn. And there we go. Now if the rail bows way up, then you're going too far, you're going to want to back that off. So, the last test here is the force, the last adjustment we need to make. That is the pressure, how much force it takes to lift the door. That's on the back of the machine here. As you can see, we've got kilograms down and kilograms up. I'm going to turn both of these to zero and readjust them. Okay, so, now it's not going to open stops there. So we're going to take the open force and turn it up. I usually go about an eighth of a turn at a time. Make very minor adjustments. Okay, that did it right there. So now we'll try to go down won't go down. But it did open up. So, to compensate for weather adjustments in the winter time and in the summertime, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit more, probably another eighth of a turn. You can see that's not very high at all. So now the closed force, we're going to do the same. Turn it up to about one and three quarter. And we'll go down.
beautiful. So again, to compensate for changes in weather, I'm gonna go a little bit more. Now, if your chain is too tight, it'll make a noise something like this while it's going through travel. At that case, you're gonna to wanna to loosen the chain a little bit. The last test we need to pass is the contact reversal test. Lay a two inch object flat on the floor and close the door. Battery in this remote's getting a little bit low. The door should hit the object and go back up. If it doesn't, you need to back off that force setting. And it goes back up. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I hope this helped you out. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me. You can either message me here through YouTube or on Facebook, or you can email me at nicksgaragedoor at gmail.com. I'll answer any questions that you've got. If you're not sure that you've got the right kit or if you're not sure what kit to buy, let me know and I'll help you out. So, with that being said, looks like it's another closed case.